encourage you to respond if the Lord is speaking to you. Jeremiah 32, verses 26 and 27, it says this. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? I want to talk to you about this thought for a few moments. I want to talk to you about what God can't do. What God can't do do let's pray and let's ask the lord to speak to us today lord we love you and thank you for your presence that is in the house today i i pray now anoint your word lord god let your word be anointed for the people gathered here today and let us be forever changed encouraged and given direction by the power of your word lord i pray that you would move us and challenge us and strengthen us today through the preaching of your word and let everything that is done bring you glory and honor and praise and give us what we need in this service we ask it in your wonderful and precious name in jesus name and everybody said amen, amen. is anything too hard for the lord that's the question that's still resonating from antiquity to us today that question posed in the book of jeremiah that i just read to you the rhetorical inquiry that god asked jeremiah was proposed not to bring doubt to jeremiah not to to give jeremiah a chance to express his doubts but rather to remind him and to remind god's people that the omnipotent nature of God, uh, listen, he is all-powerful and in control of all things, and God wanted Jeremiah to have that reminder that he is the almighty God because sometimes we need a reminder of the power of God. Can I get an amen, somebody? Sometimes when it seems like things are out of control, I need a reminder of the power of God. Sometimes when it feels like evil is prevailing in the world, we need a reminder of the power of God. And sometimes when it's hard to understand how any good could come from all the bad that is happening in your life, you need a reminder of the power of the Almighty God. Sometimes you may even wonder, what can I expect God to do in this situation? I'm praying about this. I've brought this need before him. And is what I need is it beyond God's ability to do what I'm asking him to do? But God says, do you think, Jeremiah, do you think, people of God, that there is anything that is too hard for me? <laughs> is there anything too hard for me? You see, God, the Almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, the omnipotent God, God speaks and it is. Come on, somebody. He doesn't just tell the truth. God is the truth. Uh, he is holy. He is perfect. He is everlasting. He is so much uh, that when he is asked to describe himself, uh, the only way he can properly articulate how he is everlasting to everlasting, how he is all-powerful, how he was before, he is today, and he ever will be. The only way to totally describe his majesty and power, when Moses said, I need to tell him who you are that is sending me, God said the best way to describe me is simply this I am you just tell them I am I'm the ever existent I'm the all eternal I always was I always will be God is so powerful that when Jesus went to the tomb of his friend Lazarus uh, he went to that tomb and he had to speak the name Lazarus come forth uh, because if that voice of God that was speaking through that flesh had spoken to that tomb and just said come forth uh, all the graves uh, all the death that was in that tombstone and that all the graves that were there would have opened up and all of death would have come forth because of the power that is in the voice of God. Because the power that is in that voice of God would have separated all of those people from the grip of death that was on their life. My friend, you need to know the power of God. 
Don't question the power of God. That's what Abraham and Sarah did. And they thought maybe there are some miracles that are too outlandish and too big for their God. And when God told Abraham in his old age that they were going to have a son, the Bible says that Sarah laughed. And it's real funny to study why Sarah laughed because they were old and she was convinced the magic was gone. Come on, somebody. She didn't think it could be like it used to be. But God said, listen, he said, you're going to have a son. And Sarah giggled. Sarah laughed. And God said this, because you know what? That miracle was so immense. It just seemed beyond her ability to comprehend. It seemed beyond the natural ideas and, and their, their ability to imagine. That miracle seemed so outside the realm of possibility that Sarah laughed. And God said, wait a second. In Genesis 18, 13, the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? saying, surely I shall bear a child since I am old. Is anything too hard for the Lord? <laughs> God said, Sarah, Abraham, you think that's too big? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And the Lord said, at the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And you know the story. Sarah did have a son. My friend, do listen, don't wonder if your problem is too big for God to fix. Uh, is anything too hard for the Lord? Do you wonder? Listen, maybe you wonder if your body is too sick for God to heal. Do you wonder if your need is too great for God to provide? And God says, what is there? anything too hard for the Lord but could it be huh, that some of the most encouraging promises for your life are not found in what is possible with God but maybe some of the most encouraging promises for your life are found in what God can't do I'm talking to you about what God can't do I was in a North American missions meeting uh, where a fellow pastor and friend of mine, Ted Wagner, he's a man of just immense, immense faith. And he was talking to some of us uh, leaders from Canada, and he was encouraging us to God's ability to help us. And he just uh, flippantly made a statement, uh, and he said, there are three things that God can't do. And he named off these three things, and he went on to the next conversation about what we were planning and what we were talking about. He said, there's three things that God can't do. And when I heard him, I said, oh, my goodness, that's the word. <laughs> I said, the Lord wants me to preach that. I wrote it down, uh, what God can't do. And, and I'm bringing it to you today because there is so much encouragement in what God can't do. I know you're thinking, what in the world is he talking about? Well, let me give you what these three things are that God can't do. The first thing that God can't do is God cannot change. God cannot change. God declared it about himself in Malachi 3.6 where he said, for I am the Lord and I do not change. James wrote it in the New Testament and said, whatever is good and whatever is perfect is coming down to us from our God, our Father, who created all the lights in the heaven. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. The writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 13.8 said, Jesus Christ, if you know it, say it with me, the same yesterday today and forever it is important for us to remember in a fickle fidgety and fluid society in a culture that changes its values and its morals on a daily basis uh, in a world that seems more and more comfortable with sin don't forget that god never changes listen to me god doesn't stop hating sin because the world falls in love with it can i get an amen somebody God doesn't all of a sudden, God doesn't shift with culture and governments and legislations. He is still holy, holy, holy. When Isaiah saw the vision of the Lord and he said, and he saw the angels that were declaring holy, holy, holy. Let me tell you something today in 2023, he is still holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He is still this source of all that is good. He is still the same God. And sin is a rejection of God's plan for your life. Because he's also the same God. There's some great news in that. Because the God who hates sin, the God who is holy, who cannot tolerate sin, 
the God who is bothered by lives of sin, that same God always provides a way of escape from the judgment. Uh, that same God is also the same God who's a God of mercy and a God of grace. Uh, and when the flood came, and Noah, I'm going to destroy the earth, uh, but thank God, even though the flood's going to destroy, there's going to be an ark. Uh, there's going to be a way of escape. Uh, there's going to be out, a way out of the judgment. Uh, when Nineveh repents, Jonah went and preached to Nineveh and believed he was preaching to empty ears and a city that was so wicked and so evil that he didn't put any effort into his message. He thought for sure this city is too evil and wicked for anything, for, for God to spare them. But when Nineveh repented and when Nineveh passed it and they turned towards God, he found out God is still a God of mercy and he's still a God of grace. And even though he's a God who can't tolerate sin, he will always provide his people a way of escape from it. Can I get an amen somebody. He's still the God of mercy, and he's still the God of grace. He's still the God who, even though he's going to rain down fire on Sodom, he'll extract the righteous people out of there. He'll get them out of there before the fire comes. I'm telling you, he's still the same God that is not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Oh, aren't you glad you know the mercy and the grace of our good God? And even though, listen to me, friend, because I don't know everybody's life here, but this is what I know, that even though you may have totally messed up your life, you may be addicted, you may be depressed, you may be full of promiscuity and immorality, you may have gone to places and been involved in things that you never thought you'd go or you never thought you'd be involved in. You may feel like your sin is just so bad that you're beyond the grace of God, but I've come to tell you, he's the God that never changes and he always offers a hand of grace and mercy and he says you know what yeah judgment is coming on the earth yes my tolerance will only go so far yes I still hate sin but I still desire for people to be saved he's still not willing that any should perish are you hearing what I'm saying even though you may have totally messed up your life uh, and you may even have come to church uh, as one last effort. Uh, maybe you came because you don't know how to change. Uh, you've tried every program. You've gone to every AA meeting. You've tried every bit of counseling. You've looked at every YouTube video and you don't know if there's anything left so you came to church today. Finally, you got to the source of change. Uh, finally, you got to the place uh, where your life can be radically changed forever. God has a way for you to change. You say, Pastor, what is it? I'll tell you what it is. Jesus said it in John chapter 3. He said, you must be born again. <laughs> you've got to start over. You've got to, you've got to have a new beginning. You must be born again. That's why we offer baptism every single Sunday because the Bible says that when you come up out of those waters of baptism and the blood of Jesus is applied when we call upon his name at baptism, the Bible says you come up with newness of life. <laughs> You can start over. Come on, somebody. You can start over. You can have a new chance. You can have a new life. Because he never changes. God hasn't left you to die in your mistakes and your sin. Oh, I wonder, is there anybody in the house uh, who can testify of the goodness of God in your life? Uh, I know you've been coming to church for a while, and you're dressed good, and you get a slurpee when you come to church, uh, and you can sing the songs, and thank God for what he's done, but don't forget what he's brought you from. We have all been rescued by the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God, and though we may not be what we need to be, aren't you thankful that you're not what you used to be. Somebody give the Lord praise for his goodness in your life. I like the song. There was a song we used to sing. It said, if it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I wonder if there's anybody glad to be saved in the house today that will give the Lord praise for just a moment and say, I'm glad I was washed. I'm glad I was buried with him in baptism. I'm glad Glad he filled me with his spirit. Oh, freedom. It's so good to be free. Oh, somebody clap your hands under the Lord for another moment. He never changes. He's still not willing that any should perish. 
He never changes. He still gives grace to the sinner. He's still a merciful God. Praise God. That's why the writer of Hebrews could say, let us come therefore boldly, Hebrews 4, 16, to the throne of grace. Uh, I don't care how messed up your life is today. When we call a time of prayer, you can come to the throne of grace today. I don't care how bad you've messed it up. I don't care how wicked you've become. There is help uh, in the sanctuary. There is healing in this altar. There is deliverance. Uh, there is forgiveness. Uh, we can come, the writer said, boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need that's why the second thing God can't do is so powerful because not only can God not change he doesn't change he cannot change but second thing thank God he cannot lie God cannot lie Hebrews 618 tells us this so God the Bible says has given both his promise and his oath these two things are unchangeable because it is impossible the Bible says for God to lie <laughs> is anything impossible with God the scripture says it is impossible for God to lie therefore we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us Titus 1 2 says in hope of eternal life which God and then he throws it in who cannot lie promised before time began we have the scriptures over and over telling us uh, that god cannot lie that's interesting because we are in a world that is so filled with lies it's a world and the media and social media there's so much stuff out there there's so many lies uh, so many theories so many conspiracies it's hard to know what's true anymore there's just so many lies out there we find out all the time don't we that governments lie <laughs> I, oh yeah, I, I was a cheat. I didn't really want you to amen there. Delete that, delete that from, we're going to get banned on Facebook. Help us, Lord. We learn that governments lie. We learn, you know what? We, we learn that people lie. Come on, somebody. You've been ripped off. You've been taken advantage of. It turns out in this world, people lie a lot. It, it, it turns out, you know what? Uh, oh, i got to give a revelation to the young people here. YouTube lies. <laughs> yeah. That was a big revelation. That one took a little bit out of me. You ready for the next one? TikTok lies. I'm telling you, it's a world that is full of lies. They are everywhere. But there's one thing that God cannot do. He will never lie. And so, listen, when the angel came to Mary... Hey, you know, we're coming up to Christmas, and we're going to be telling you the Christmas story. And the angel comes to Mary, and he tells Mary, you know, that she's going to be the one privileged to give birth to the Messiah. And, and this is, and Mary says, how can this be, seeing I know not a man? How can this be, seeing I'm a virgin? How, how am I going to give birth to the Messiah? And the angel says to her, and this is what your King James good old songs, you know, this is what you've always heard, that the angel says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, that's in good old King James, old 1600 English. But actually, most of the modern translations, they read it this way in Luke 137. And it's, it's powerful, I'm telling you. This is, what, this is what the scripture says that the angel said in Luke 137. For no, put it up there, word from God. For no word from God will ever fail. No word from God will ever fail fail in other words if God said it it is true if God declares it you can believe it if God speaks it it will happen so when Jesus spoke to his disciples who are a little troubled in John 14 and he said let not your heart be troubled you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Do you know what that means? If he said it, 
it will come to pass. That means because he said it, Jesus is coming again. Come on, somebody. Jesus said it. And it will happen. Jesus is coming again. You say, why are you telling us that, Pastor? I'll tell you why. Because you need to remind yourself about the God who cannot lie. And every promise in the Word of God, it is true. Every promise in that Word of God, it will come to pass. Every promise in that Word of God, you can claim it and stand on it and believe it and declare it. Because God will not lie. No matter what you're going through, you've got a reason to look up and to get up and to shape up. Uh, because Jesus said he was coming again to bring us to himself uh, and God cannot lie does anybody still believe we've got hope uh, in Jesus Christ uh, who's coming for his people he's coming for us uh, and I can believe it you say pastor why can you believe it because he said it and God will not lie God cannot lie. God cannot lie. Listen, in Isaiah 43, if you want a, a good building up of your understanding of God, read the book of Isaiah. Because in the book of Isaiah, God declares all kinds of stuff about himself. It sometimes is called the Isaiah champion because God declares who he is in such strong and bold terms. And look in Isaiah 43 too. In Isaiah 43 too, Isaiah here, the Lord said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Do you know what that means? When you're going through, the Lord's going to be with you. As you go through the waters, uh, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. In, in the New Testament, Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Uh, what does that mean for you? It means that no matter what you're going through, no matter what fire, no matter what flood, no matter what storms you're going through, he said it, and that means he's with with you in it. So don't get discouraged because he's there. He's with you. He's keeping you. Every prayer request prayed for and every one that wasn't mentioned. I got good news. God cannot lie. And he just declared, when you go through it, he'll be with you. He's with you right now because God cannot lie. But let me tell you one other thing. God cannot change. God cannot lie. But there's one more thing. God cannot fail. God cannot fail. I'm here to declare to you, he's never lost a battle. <laughs> I'm here to let you know that this God that I serve, he's never been defeated. Come on, somebody. I'm here to tell you, this God that we worshiped here in service, he's never been taken off guard. He's never had a sneak attack that took him by surprise. We looked at COVID and said, oh, my Lord, we never understood this. God said, I was planning for this for all of time. There's nothing that takes God off guard. And he says, oh, I didn't see that coming. He's in control of every single situation. And like the song says, sometimes we sing it here, there's a song that says even when I don't see it he's working <laughs> even when I don't feel it he's working in fact he never stops never stops never stops working that's the song you know what the truth is even though I may not know it he is working for my good even though you may not understand it he is working for your good let me show you a little bit about what God says about himself look in Isaiah 14 24 here the Lord of heaven's armies uh, hath sworn an oath the Bible says the Lord of the armies of heaven this is what he says it will happen as I have planned it will be as I have decided come on that's our God who says there's nothing that happens that he's not in control of does anybody know that the devil even when the devil wanted to afflict Job God had to say okay go ahead because there's nothing outside the plan and the goodness of God Oh, now you're getting a little confused. Now you're getting a little nervous because look at what Isaiah 46, 8 says. In Isaiah 46, 8, here the Lord said, remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish my purpose I got news for you God's in control 
I got news for you. You may look at the world and say, what is going on in the world? God's in control. You may look at this society, you may look at our culture and wonder, God, how can you redeem it? God is in control. You may look at, I'm just telling you, you may look at your situation, you may look at what you're going through and think, I'm just going to give up, I guess I just have to quit praying. You may quit praying, but don't quit believing. God is in control because there is nothing the Lord said that's not part of his plan. There is nothing that he hasn't already seen. There is nothing that is outside of his his will and he said and I will accomplish all my purpose God is sovereign he has ultimate power his will and his plan are perfect he's in control he's got this and he cannot fail and here's the thing when your life is aligned and in sync with his will when you have turned your life and your family and everything when you've surrendered yourself to his will to his plan to his purpose when you have given yourself fully committed to serving god and accomplishing his will in your life then even seasons of pain fear and uncertainty are part of the greater victory in the plan of god Oh, you needed that. You need to hear that again. I'm telling you, when you're serving God, when you're living your best for him, when you're giving him your all, when you've decided, I will serve him, I will give him my life, I won't turn back, I'm going to live for him, then even the seasons of pain and uncertainty and fear, they're part of the greater victory God is going to bring in your life. So Daniel, keep praying. Keep praying three times a day, even though the law says you can't pray. Keep praying, because in that lion's den, God is going to shut up the mouth of the lions. And by the time this is over, Daniel, the king will declare the sovereignty of your God. <laughs> so you keep praying, because even your lion's den is part of the plan of God. You're not hearing what I'm saying. So David, don't quit, uh, even though Saul wants to kill you. You hold on to what God told you when the Samuel came and anointed you with oil, David. You hold on to the promise of God in your life. Because remember, God cannot lie. And God said you're going to be king. And God has declared it. So even when Samuel's chasing you all across the land, and he's trying to kill you, and armies are out to stop you, even when it seems like everything is against you, David, you hold on to the word of God. And you don't quit. Uh, because one day you'll be king just like the Lord said you will. Uh, I'm telling you, Joseph, uh, God gave you a dream. Uh, and listen, don't compromise your character when it doesn't seem like the dream is coming to pass. Uh, Joseph, don't quit. Uh, I know you're in Potiphar's house. Uh, I know you've been falsely accused by his wife, but don't compromise your character. Don't give in to the opportunities to sin. Joseph, you hold on because the word of God is true and God cannot lie. And he gave you a dream and he showed you his plan for your life. So Joseph, don't compromise your character. Joseph, don't lose your joy in the prison because there's some prisoners that are going to need your joy. And it turns out one of those prisoners uh, is going to make sure that one day you're just not going to be ready for it, but you keep your character intact because one day you're going to be lifted in a moment out of your prison cell into the palace uh, to take care of Egypt and be a prince. I'm telling you, God has a plan for your life too. And if you stay the course... Uh, Oh, turn to somebody and say, stay the course. If you stay the course, God has a plan for your life. If you believe it, clap your hands unto God. My friend, stay faithful to God. Stay faithful to God. And he will bring victory in your life. Stay faithful to God. Stay committed to the plan of God. And he will bring victory to your life. One of the most encouraging letters in all of Scripture. And i got to hurry so musicians can come in three minutes. One of the most encouraging letters of all of Scripture is the book of Philippians. Paul writing to the people in the church in the city of Philippi. What makes it so encouraging, there's just such strength and there's such declarations of God's power and such declaration of God's plan. And, and, and it's the context that makes the book of Philippians so powerful. Because when you know that Paul is writing these encouraging words from his own prison cell 
He's writing from his own personal prison. And there, he should feel defeated. You know, in prison, you should feel discouraged. He doesn't belong in that prison. It doesn't seem fair. He should be resentful for the people that, that got him there and the people maybe who betrayed him and the people who, who put him in that prison. He should be focused on those that hurt him. And he should be focused on everything that is wrong. And he should be focused on the fact that it's not fair. But Paul writes this, Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Huh, what are you talking about, Paul? You're in a prison. What are you talking about, Paul? You're locked up. What are you, uh, you can't even leave the facility, Paul. How can you say you can do all things? Oh, you see, Paul knows the God that cannot lie. God, Paul knows the God who cannot fail. Come on, somebody. And so even though he's in, I feel the Holy Ghost, uh, even though he's in the prison cell, he can boldly declare the word of God in his life. He can boldly declare the plan of God in his life. And even though the circumstances don't fit the message, the message is true because God cannot lie and God cannot fail. So Paul will write, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then he continues to write and he boldly declares to the audience that would read that Holy Ghost written letter, not just in Philippi, but for all of eternity forward, you and I would read that Paul would declare for you and I, and my God, Philippians 4.19, will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Paul, how do you know God can do that for me? Paul, how can you say that? You don't know my situation. You don't know my need. How can you declare that for all of time? Why would that little statement get forever settled in the word of God, forever settled in heaven for eternity, that Paul could declare that God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ? You know why Paul can declare that? Because he has learned what I'm trying to tell you today, that God cannot fail God cannot fail and God will not fail you come on somebody God will not let you down God has a plan for your life and stay the course because God will never fail I've come to tell you church uh, I have come to this church today to tell you God cannot fail and God won't fail you either he's a great God he's a good God he's an awesome God he's an all-powerful God he's an in control God oh, I feel the Holy Ghost I wish somebody believed what I I wish there was an amen that would agree with what I'm saying he's a God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills uh, he's the God that speaks and it is made manifest uh, he He's the God that says, let there be, and there is. And this God that is all-powerful, he will never change, he will never lie to you, and he will never fail you. And you, listen to the voice of the Lord for a second, and you can trust in him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Tom, mate la poco. You can trust in in him come on turn to whoever's near you and say you can trust in my god come on speak it speak it with confidence you can trust in my god you can trust in my god he has never failed he has never failed you see you didn't know when you spoke to that person you may have been speaking to their cancer but you can tr you can trust in my god you didn't know when you spoke to that person, there's no money left in their bank account, but you can trust in my God. You didn't know whoever you told is going through depression, but you can trust in my God. You didn't know whoever you spoke to, you have no idea what they're going through, but no matter what you're going through, you can trust in God. Because he never fails. <laughs> he never fails. His word, the angel said, his word will never fail so I can stand upon every promise in that book I can claim every scripture for myself I can claim that he's with me through the fire and know that it's true in every bit of trouble I've learned like Paul and hopefully you have too that my God will never fail oh 
Oh, just lift your hands for a second. His presence is here. Oh, there's faith in the house right now. Oh, there's faith in this house right now. Oh, there's faith in this house right now. Uh, oh, there's faith in this house. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus right now because there's faith in this house right now. Somebody declare your miracle right now because there's faith in the house right now. Our God will never fail you. Our God has never lost a battle. Our God is in control. Come on, somebody. Let your faith respond right now. Our God will never fail. Our God will never fail. And hear me. Hear me. No matter what season of life you're in. But let me just tell you, life is full of seasons. We know it. We're reminded of it. At 8 o'clock tonight, you're reminded summer's over. <laughs> Life's full of seasons. It, I hate to say it. It's going to get dark. I hate to say it. It's going to get cold. I really hate to tell you. As much as I want that snow not to come, I got faith there's going to be snow. Life is full of seasons. There's seasons of harvest. There's seasons of joy. There's seasons of grief. There's seasons of pain. They're all part of being alive. And thank God we're alive. But through every season, oh, hallelujah, no matter what season you're in, you can trust in the God who cannot fail. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel his presence here. Oh, I feel his presence here. He's here to let you know he will not fail you now either. That's why in every trouble you can have joy. That's why even when your body is in pain, you can still rejoice. That's why even when you're sitting in prison, you can still give praise and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because our God has never failed. And he won't fail you now. All across this place, would you stand with me? Oh, hallelujah, I feel his presence here. Close your eyes and wait on the Lord for one more minute. Acts chapter 27, if you want to read it for your homework this week. In Acts chapter 27, Luke gives a unique and unusual description of a storm. It's bizarre how much detail Luke gives into describing the storm that he and Paul and a, on a ship, taking Paul to another prison, to another trial. And Luke goes into this incredible, it's, it's, it's bizarre, read it. Half of the chapter is Luke telling you which direction the wind was going and how high the waves were and how, how much the water was rising. And he's, he's giving you all this, this incredible detail as to how bad the storm was. He wants you to know this was like the storm of storms. In fact, at one point, Luke says that the, it was so dark, he says that they couldn't see the stars anymore. The stars had disappeared, and the sun was gone, and the moon was gone. It was so dark that they couldn't even find their way because it was so dark they couldn't see the, to, to their way and their direction. And sometimes, you know what? Life gets like that. It gets so dark, you just don't know what to do. You just can't see where. You don't know what to do. I don't just like you're sitting in a fog and just in a daze and Luke says hey, it got so dark we couldn't even see the stars anymore to know which way to go we didn't know if we were in the right direction we didn't know if we were lost we just we just had nowhere left to go it's totally dark and everyone on the boat is sure they're gonna die people are losing their minds they're they're throwing off food they're they're just doing crazy stuff because everybody is sure they're going to die. Everyone on the ship, the crew, the captain, everybody, the prisoners, everybody is overwhelmed because they know this is it. It's a storm unlike any other storm. And then three days into the storm, Paul stands up and says, gather everybody around here. Another hit of the wave. And can, can everybody get around here? Ship is being tossed. 
And look at what he says in Acts 27, 22. The thunder is raging. And there's just been another bolt of lightning. And he says, I want to tell you all, be of good cheer. <laughs> you can be happy right now. What? What are you talking about, be of good cheer? We're going to die. Paul says, no, no, be of good cheer. Everybody, put a smile on your face. Everybody get happy. For there shall be not any loss of life among you. The ship, the ship's going to go down. Yeah, gone. <laughs> ship's gone. But everybody, nobody's going to die. And everybody's thinking, has this guy lost his mind? How's he telling us to be of good cheer in the midst of this terrible storm? He'll tell you why. For last night, there stood by me an angel of God. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Last night, Paul says, the Lord reminded me who I am. I got a little scared last night, but last night, the angel of the Lord, the presence of the Lord came upon me, and God reminded me who it is I serve. And I came to tell you all today, after being in the presence of the Lord like I was last night, and I found out who I am, and I found out who I serve, you all can put a smile on your face, uh, because I'm in the plan of God, and I'm in the will of God, and it turns out that nothing that this world throws at me is going to be able to get me off course. So Paul said, verse 24, saying, the angel said to him, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all of them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, and it shall be even as he told me. Paul was saying, I found out God doesn't lie, and I found out God doesn't fail, and the angel reminded me last night, I'm in the plan of God, and the angel reminded me who the God is I serve. And even in the midst of this storm, I'm telling you all, be of good cheer. We're going to make it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. In the midst of the storm, Paul was of good cheer because God's presence reminded him of the plan that God had for his life. And that's what's about to happen right now. Somebody in the storm of storms, somebody that's dark and you can't even see the stars, somebody who's lost your way, if you'll get into the presence of the Lord and you'll put your trust in him again and you'll let him know again, I trust you, I believe in you, I'm serving you, I'm not turning back, I'm giving my life to you. That presence of the Lord as it surrounds you and it comes even into you and the presence of the Lord fills you. Do you know what it does? It reminds you who you are, and it reminds you who it is you serve. You serve the God who stands in the counsel of no one but himself and says, is anything too hard for the Lord? I want to tell you, a few moments in his presence right now can bring you to good cheer. It can reignite something in your life. And so I know at the beginning of service, Stephanie said, if you have a need, if you'd like to come and pray, but I'm going to say it again. If you're in the darkness, if you're in the storm, if you're in a difficulty, I've tried to tell you how much God is in control of your life. You say, well, Pastor, what do I need to do? I'll tell you. You need to get in the presence of the Lord where he can remind you that he's got your life in his hands, that he's got your, 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 your future in his hands, that he's never lost a battle, and it may seem like nothing's going the way you thought it should, but he's in control of every situation in 